Hello and welcome back to our last video about standard elements. A beautiful standard element we hear at the end. A delay system second order. Okay. Remember this one? This was the base equation. Yeah. The base differential equation. Here we had an example of a PT1 element, like it turned out. And how does the PT2 element look like? Yeah, so let's write here PT2 element. This is the actually the element second order, yeah, delay element second order. We had T2 squared, and now second derivation of the output, first derivation of the output, output, output equals k multiplied xi from t. This was pt1 element. This is pt2 element. Okay. Of course, I mean, actually, it's still looking the same. Yeah? There's an element. PT2, it's called. There is an input and there is an output. Okay. So this is actually the same. This is XO from T or after Laplace transformation F from S and this is XI from T. Or after last plus transformation from S. Okay? Then still the same. And this is the equation, a yeah, differential equation. So let's make a Laplace transformation. Yeah. So second derivation is S squared, XO from S, plus first derivation is S. This is just S. And this is K multiplied by XO, of course, and XI. Here we can get out XO. And here we have 1 plus TIS plus T2 squared S squared equals XI from S. S should here be written multiplied by K. This means XO from S equals xi from s multiply k divided by 1 plus this is g the transfer function of the pt2 element and this is already the correct transfer function okay however usually usually and we will see why we are substituting T2 yeah, with 1 divided by some omega n, some frequency. Yeah. This is the so-called natural frequency. Yeah. And T1 yeah, we substitute with 2 times T divided by omega n. Okay. This T is called damping factor. Yeah, this omega n, like I said, is the so-called natural frequency. So let's write down g from s equals k divided by 1 plus 2t omega n, that's t1 multiplied by s, plus 1 divided by omega n squared. This is t2 squared multiplied by s squared. This is the transfer function of the pt2 element. Yeah. We could do the math. Yeah. Look at j omega. We can also do the reverse of the plus transformation and look what it looks like on a step response. Yeah. 
depending on D and omega n, so the damping and the natural frequency, this will look different, okay, totally different. This is why I prepared something on the computer, yeah, Excel sheet to show you how things change when we are changing some parameters in there. First, let us have a look on the jump, jump response. Okay, I've prepared a little something. Here is a jump. Okay, you see the jump over here. Uh, this is currently a PT2 element with K1, with omega n also 1, and with damping also 1. So everything is 1, then it would look like this. Now, let's see what is changing when I change the parameters. Let's look what is changing at k. I use 1.5, then the stationary end value will be 1.5. Yeah? I use 5, then the stationary end value will be 5. Well, that should not be a big, big surprise, yeah? because this is what actually we sh you should meanwhile expect after all those other elements. Other elements. This here, this looks almost, almost like a PT1. The big difference is here. A PT1 would start with a sharp knick bend, yeah? and here this is starting gentle. And then it first is increasing faster, 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 and then it's slowing down. Okay, there is the difference. Let's see what the damping is. Yeah? Currently damping is 1. What if damping is 0? Book. We see, aha, uh -huh. we do end in a swing. Yeah? And it does not seem for us right now that this, seem is, this swing is slowing down. So let's see if we double this. Aha. Uh -huh. Now we see the, the, the feature or the, 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 the thing of the natural frequency. Yeah? The natural frequency is actually the frequency of this swing. Okay? If I use 5, then it's even, even faster. Okay? So the natural frequency is the swinging of the undamped system. Good? Hopefully. So, let's use 2. Okay. Looks good. What is if I now start to increase the damping? 0 0.1. Or, actually, I don't, don't use 2. We're using 1 divided, or we are using 2 divided by pi. As a formula, of course. Well, we use pi. This is good. Then we do have here exactly exactly what two seconds would then be because you know it's two pi, and in two seconds we are we are have the standard frequency. What if we are now changing the damping? Let's say zero dot two. Then we see, aha, uh -huh, the swinging, it's still swinging, but it's damped. Yeah. And we do also see, here, if we have zero, yeah, we reach a two, the lowest point. If we do have zero dot two, yeah, we reach it a little bit later. Okay, so it seems like the frequency of the Damped swinging is lower than the natural frequency. It seems like the natural frequency is the maximum frequency I can have. Okay. Let's see, damping 0 0.5. Aha, uh -huh. even more damped. Yeah. Now we know why it's called damping. 
and I can tell you there are special points in damping at 0 0.7 yeah. you see it's almost you don't even see it's uh, swinging anymore and there is one or 0 0.0999 then it looks like this okay what if I increase the damping even more what if I do so let's say two then you see it's just crawling slower five still slower yeah so the damping up to damping one we will over swing we will be we will go above Starting from one and above, we will grow slower and slower to the end value. Okay, so the damping should now be clear, right? So damping below one means damping zero means we have a swing with this frequency, the natural frequency. Right? We have seen this, this is why this is called that way. And damping below one, between zero and one, yeah, will cause also a swinging, yeah? and the swinging is damped. Yeah? We can calculate an actual damping, which is the damping factor multiplied by the natural frequency, yeah? and then out of this we can calculate a damping a damping time constant, yeah? tau. This time constant is the time constant where the, the uh, amplitude is getting lower. Okay, so we have seen it's damped, yeah, and with this time constant, after one time constant, the amplitude is around 37%. Okay, time constant, damped, yeah, absolute damping. We have also seen that this frequency. Yeah, of the swinging is getting lower yeah? so it cannot always swing with the natural frequency the natural frequency seems to be the highest frequency we got yeah? and the actual frequency of the damped swinging yeah, can be calculated out of this natural frequency and the damping this is the formula for it This is the time, the frequency of the damped swing, circular frequency, of course. This is the natural frequency, and this is the factor. So if damping is one, this is zero. It's not swinging anymore. If damping is zero, this is one, that's then the natural frequency, and in between is something in between. Okay. So this is the circular frequency of the damped swinging. This means the actual frequency of the damped swing divided by 2p yeah, hertz here we have hertz and out of this we get the time of the swing yeah. so this is 1 divided by the frequency actually 2 pi divided by omega 0 okay this is the period time of the swinging of the damped swinging out of this period time yeah, we can calculate how long it takes until the first to the first overswing yeah. so here we have seen there was the input yeah, zit, 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 yeah, and there was the output was going up there yeah? and then it did swing yeah? so this is now this t0 yeah? the period yeah and here this is the time to the maximum okay and this is actually t0 half yeah? because now here we start swing here it's the top swing so actually this is half of this and this half of this is of course P 
divided by omega zero. Okay. This is the time it takes to the first overswing. And how big is this overswing? This can be also calculated. And this overswing, yeah, we we'll call it U, German Überschwingen, yeah, is E raised by the power of, now it's getting a little bit complicated, D, 1 plus D squared. Okay. This is how many percent yeah, the first one is there. Yeah. So if damping, if damping for instance is zero, yeah, then it's not, not damped at all. Yeah. So it will be doubled. Okay, so to make this clear once again, yeah, let's have a look on different damped systems. I will now show you. I have different system in here, so and I will, will use different dampings. Let's call 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Let's call 0 0.5. Yeah, and there you see they all behave different. Yeah, this blue one is not damped at all. 0 0.1 damping is already pretty much damped. There is there is this this absolute damping. Huh? I've showed you. Huh? This absolute damping is how fast the time constant of this absolute damping is how fast the amplitude is decreasing. Okay. Yeah. And then we can can go up to let's say let's use 0 0.7. Yeah? Then 0 0.8, 0 0.9, yeah, 1, yeah, and 1.1. 1 .1. And then you see it's again slower, 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 slower. Yeah. And now let's also compare some above 1. So we will start at 1. Yeah. Then we use 1.2, I would say, then we are using 2, then we are using 3, and then we are using 5. You see, the more it is damped, the slower it will simply, simply crawl. Okay. And since this shows how these behaviors are. Yeah. I think I had to show you here on computer. Okay. This is step response. Well, and now let's have a look on the frequency response. Yeah. I also prepared quite this thing for you. Okay. So here you see PT2 element with k1 omega n1 and damping one so exactly the element we started with first also huh? here are the numbers behind Poo, this formula huh? this would look like this okay absolute value phase value we change actually we change from one and then dropping very fast double twice as fast as with pt1 yeah you see 10 times frequency only uh, already only a hundredth time of the output here yeah? a pt1 would drops much slower okay? and also the phase shift is not going to minus 90 it's going to minus 180 in the end okay? let's tune a little bit the parameters okay? so the parameter k okay, Two, you see, it's moving here. The value where we end, it's no, no influence, no influence on the on the phase. That's always the case. Five, it's just moving up here. 
shifting, shifting this line here up and down. Okay, let's have a look at the damping. Zero. Woo! Yeah. This has a huge effect on the face. You see, the face is now suddenly dropping from zero to nine, minus 180, and there is a thing called resonance. Okay, there is a resonance now. Let's use a reasonable damping, 0 0.2. Then you see, aha, the output can be even higher than the input. Mm -hmm. And you see, it's a very sharp change here. Here at 0 0.7, we do not see a, res uh, a freak, uh, resonance anymore. 0 0.5, let's see. Yeah, there is already resonance. Yeah. There's a resonance frequency where we reach the maximum. Okay, that's the resonance frequency. And if you have a look on the on the phase, yeah, you will notice that the lower the damping is, the sharper this change will be. Yeah, zero to five, it's already smoother. Zero to nine, no, oh, it almost looks gentle. Yeah. 1.1, still more gentle. Now let's see what is happening if I increase the damping even more. 2. Aha, uh -huh. now we see they're starting some more flat space. And also here, this looks a little bit like someone hit here with the pen. Ping on the. Let's go even further. Aha! Uh -huh. Even further, here we can see it very good already. This here is are basically two PT1 elements. Yeah, one with a band here. This here we are at minus 45. Yeah, first PT1 element and the second PT1 element in series here. Yeah, so here we are dropping from minus 90 again to minus 180. So now. This looks like two PT1s elements yeah, in series. Actually, this is what it is. Yeah. So we can have we can have uh, resonance, yeah, or we can have a gentle gentle transformation. Okay. And this omega n. Let's also play around with this. Use two. You see, we are just shifting the omega position or the frequency position. Yeah, let's use 10, then we're even more right. Yeah. Use 0 0.1. We are around 0 0.1. Okay. Damping 1. That's it. Okay. And in the polar plot, we have seen there's a resonance frequency. Okay, so there's a resonance frequency, and we can also calculate this resonance frequency. And this resonance frequency, omega resonance, yeah, is the natural, and it's almost, almost 0.5 or it's, let's call it similar to the net to the swinging frequency. This was the swinging frequency, omega zero, and this is the resonance frequency. You see, it's a different frequency, but not that different. Okay, and similar to this overswing here in in time, yeah, we do have a resonance height. Yeah, this resonance height is actually actually also in percent. Yeah, how many percent, and it's a little bit easier this formula this is how much percent we are over if you calculate this you see that only in case if d is smaller than 1 divided by the square root of 2 we get some resonance, okay? Only in this case. If it's bigger than this, yeah, then this is not positive. 
Okay, so this is around 0 0.7. So at 0 0.7, starting from 0 0.7 and above, we don't have reason nets. We still have this overswing at 0, this we have up to 1, yeah? but resonance we only have up to 0 0.7. Below 0.7 we have resonance and overswing. So, I will also show you the overlay of several PT2 systems. Here you can see damping 0.2, still resonance. 0.7, no resonance. However, I want to put something in between also. Let's say 0.3. Was the wrong column here 0 0.3 yeah and let's say 0 0.6 and you see this resonance frequency is shifting a little bit yeah? shifting a little bit uh, maybe let's do not use 0 0.6 let's 0 0.5 yeah then we see it better this resonance frequency is changing, like in the formula. Okay. And if we have high damping, yeah, if we are above one, then it looks like two PT ones here. And here you can see the difference in the change. Okay. Yeah. I mean that's it. That's that's the PT two system. Okay. So actually. This was the last standard element we are going to talk about. Yeah. Next things we are going to talk are how we can use those standard elements in our control theory. Yeah. Right now we learned a bunch of standard elements, but now we are going to use them. Okay. But first we have to talk about the control loop itself, the model of the control loop. Yeah. This will then be in next video. Okay. So, next video, model of the control loop. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.